We are right now being asked to disregard reality, logic and any rational standard of fairness and embrace a perverse version of inclusion that sees biological males allowed to participate in women's sporting competitions. There's a reason why men and women have their own competitions, because men are stronger, they're bigger, they're faster, and natural-born women cannot hope to compete against natural-born men, no matter how they identify. The latest trans athlete to make a mockery of women's sport is swimmer Leah Thomas, who on the weekend won gold at an NCAA swimming event. Now, if you ask me, even though Leah is required to take testosterone suppressant treatment, the real winner was Emma Wyatt. She's an Olympic silver medalist from the Tokyo Games, so we're talking about the elite of the elite. She should be listed as the winner in my opinion, but the record books will show that she came in second to Thomas. I want to speak now with someone who was there at that event, standing up for what is right and fair. Kelly J. Keane is from Standing for Women. She joins me now. Kelly J, you flew over to the States from the UK for that particular event. Why was it so important for you to be there? Uh, well, I did actually fly for a number of events. So we did um, on something outside of the White House on, on uh, International Women's Day. We also protested the UN. Um, and then this was a fortuitous uh, little escape to Atlanta. Um, I think it's really important because in the US, uh, this is almost the very least of what is happening to women's rights. Um, whilst sports is really, really important, and I know it certainly is in Australia too, um, what else is happening to children's bodies and women's rights in America is absolutely catastrophic. So this is a really good, very visual way of getting people to understand just what is going on uh, with respect to everybody having to pretend that these men are actually women. Well, the, the question of fairness, um, surely there can be no question that biological males have a physical advantage over natural born women. We, we, we don't see women identifying as men competing in men's competition, for example, because they'd be absolutely trounced. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, this is not just about elite sports either. This is about how dangerous it is right throughout, sort of from grassroots, uh, five-a-side football right the way up to uh, this sort of elite sports and, and also in the Olympics. Um, and sport for women is not, well, sport for anybody. It's not just about winning. It's not even just about the gameplay. It's also about the camaraderie. It's about changing rooms. It's about safe spaces. It's about organising in single-sex spaces, which allows everybody to have a little bit of a uh, role and a journey that maybe they don't have if they don't participate in these sort of single sex um, events and sports. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. it's the whole thing. You know, it's not like, I don't know what it's like in Australia. You have such uh, incredible sports, I'm sure. But over here in the UK, trying to get teenage girls to even participate in sport is really difficult. To now include men like Leah Thomas is in the girls' changing rooms. And if those girls object, they can lose their place on the team. Well, did you have a chance to speak to any of the female swimmers uh, or their families about Leah Thomas and how they feel about her competing in the women's uh, section? Yeah, well, I, I fortuitously went a little bit viral uh, with one of my comments to a trans activist. And so people knew who I was. And there was also a protest outside by a, an organisation called Save Women Sports. Um, the overwhelming number... Uh, sort of feel of people entering that swimming pool that day, all the spectators and the families and the other swimmers, was one of gratitude that somebody was actually willing to stay, say something on their behalf because they can't. Um, I did speak to a young swimmer from a different university who said it was really uncomfortable in the changing rooms. There was like a bizarre silence where nobody was allowed to acknowledge the fact that they were uncomfortable or that there was a man uh, in their space. So... You know, the, the gaslighting is astronomical. Uh, the grandpa I spoke to parents and grandparents who are like, thank you so much. Um, you have no idea what this means to us. We just can't speak up. 
Kelly J. Keane, thank you so much for joining me this evening and having the courage to get involved in this debate because there's a reason why so many of those swimmers and their families only speak anonymously to, to the media because they are absolutely terrified of the backlash that, they, that would come their way. So thank you for being brave enough to do that.